<laughs> okay, don't judge. Well, this isn't really supposed to be the definitive cure-all, fix-all. This is not collegiate level casting. This is some clown in his garage doing this. I'm trying to just kind of cover all the little bases um, that might help some of you uh, not have to go through all the pain that I did when I was first learning how to how to do this. Uh, that noise you hear running, that's my the fan on my induction cook pot here. Uh, Chooch in here, melting some wax. But uh, uh, hopefully I'm going to try to keep this little segment short and show you how I solve the problem of sprues pouring cups. Uh, as you notice, the bench is clean. There isn't any, we don't have any dogs or switches or mirrors or any crap up here. Everything is, all of what initial wax molding work is done and ready to go. So now we have to move on to sprueing this stuff so we can get it into shell. Now, I can't claim credit for any of this stuff because I'm not that smart, but I did find this uh, kind of combination of some ideas from some people on the fine internet. This is disgusting. So, let me show you the little box I built. Um, said box here was actually some... How did I do this now? It's been a while. Okay, I guess this was some 2x2 two two or 1x2? This might have been some 1x2 box that I had. And uh, it appears that I must have cut one side of it off, I guess. And TIG welded the ends up and whatnot, and then I drilled some holes uh, slightly up off the bottom. You notice that's the hole's not actually centered, and the reason why is because I have a bed of plaster in the bottom, and then I have the walls. Uh, give you some rough estimate here. It's uh, about a foot long, and the thing is, uh, yeah, it looks like it's two inches wide. And uh, that was an inch and a half high, so I don't know. Do they make inch and a half by two? I don't know. Either way, I found it. And, uh, oops, let's keep the wax moving so it doesn't burn. If anybody knows why wax like that starts to pop, I'd be interested to hear. I kind of personally think I've gotten a little bit of water in my wax, but whatever. Um, okay, so then what we have is we have a rod. And this Mr. Rod, I believe, is 3 8 uh, no, half inch rod. So now we have a piece of half inch rod. What's going to happen is this plaster is going to get dunked in a bucket of water and it's going to soak for about 10 minutes. Then we are going to take said half inch rod, which you can see spans the entire length of it, and we're going to lube it up, uh, lube it up with a little bit of booty butter. And then after this has soaked, for 10 minutes or so, it'll be nice and uh, saturated so the wax will not stick to it. And then we will insert the rod through this mold. Uh, go ahead and dump the wax in, send it up almost to the top, there's no reason for it to overflow the top. And uh, watch it, and then once it starts to harden, we will then slide Mr. Rod out of there. Give it a little bit more time to kind of start setting up. And then uh, I'll take a pick or something and grab an end. And sometimes I've even had to push in through here and get it out. The whole purpose behind this, you say why, is it's going to give us a hollow uh, square. And the square is going to be, in this case, 3 quarters of an inch by 3 quarters of an inch, I believe, is, is the outside dimensions with a half inch hole stuck in the middle of it. And the plan, I think, is one, it takes less wax to, to make one of these which is always a good thing. And the second reason is by it having that uh, hole up through the middle, when you come along through the pouring cup and force heat, it's gonna go up this and it's not having to work to try to melt, 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 melt until it gets to eventually to your part. Uh, kind of the thought is by it having that hole in there, the inside of it is gonna cave in first and it's gonna help speed up and evacuate that wax out of there during de-wax because as we know with ceramic shell, it's very, very easy to uh, heat it too slow and the wax expands, thus cracking the ceramic shell and then you get to play all kind of fun games and then patching it up. So with that, uh, the wax is just about uh, melted. I'm going to go ahead and dump this in a thing of water. And 
and uh, and then we wait. Alrighty. Cold, uh, the cold ice I can see now is actually starting to make this thing shrink, so I expect it's about ready to. There she goes. There she goes. So, get a little bite on it. See, it's starting to kind of lift now. That's it. And that's all she wrote. So, there it is. That's what we get. We get a hollow sprue, and uh, it's hollow all the way through. Yeah, I didn't make my mold exactly square, but that's okay. A little rectangle's okay. And uh, good thing now, this thing is already saturated, and uh, and it's actually cold now, so that'll probably help the next one pull right out. Usually, I can knock out you know, a dozen of these in an hour or so. And uh, you know, when you're done, you have the wax that you're supposed to have. It's the same stuff. And, uh, it'll melt out. You can capture it, send it right back in the pot, and uh, away you go. And uh, rinse, oops, rinse and repeat. So I won't make you watch me make a whole bunch of these, but I got to knock out about probably three or four at least to get the job done here, maybe more. And uh, we will see you guys again soon. That's uh, Wax Sprue 101. Works for me. Might not work for you. But uh, I like it. I might keep doing it. <laughs>